Prince Harry and Meghan Markle may need to strike a balance between maintaining their privacy and handling the press, royal author Carolyn Duran said. The claim comes after the couple alleged that they were almost involved in a near-fatal car crash as they were pursued through the streets of New York by paparazzi following their appearance at the Women of Vision Awards at the Ziegfeld Ballroom. The couple are chased all the time by photographers. The expert asserted adding that Prince Harry is determined to keep his family safe, particularly given the events surrounding his mother Princess Diana's death. The Duke and Duchess want to create the compromise where they can live a quieter life in California, but still highlight the issues that are important to both of them. And I think that that's laudable, certainly, Carolyn Duran said. They'll have to make a determination about what the balance is. If they really want that life of privacy and how you balance that with people chasing you on the streets of New York or LA or London, the expert added. This week, the couple's spokesperson had said in a statement, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Ms. Ragland were involved in a near-catastrophic car chase at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. In the car which was chased by the paparazzi Prince Harry, Meghan Markle and her mother, Doria Ragland, were present and the relentless pursuit lasted over two hours, the spokesperson informed. Owing to the chase, their car could have been part of multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians and two NYPD, New York Police Department, officers, the spokesperson informed. Prince Harry Meghan Markle, disputing the couple's claims, the agency said it was taking Prince Harry's allegations seriously. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were not in immediate danger at any point during the alleged two-hour paparazzi car chase that the couple believed could have been fatal, it has been claimed. The Sussexes claimed that they were subjected to a near-catastrophic pursuit by photographers after leaving a gala in New York with Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland. Backgrid USA Inc., the agency that hired four freelance photographers to cover the event, insisted that one of the four cars escorting the couple was driving in a manner that could be perceived as reckless. Disputing the couple's claims, the agency said it was taking Prince Harry's allegations seriously. The vehicle was seen blocking off streets, and in one video, it is shown being pulled over by the police, it said, adding that it does not condone any form of harassment or illegal activity, and will conduct a thorough investigation into the matter. The royals, on the other hand, claimed that they were subjected to a chase after leaving the Miz. Foundation Gala, at which Meghan Markle was honoured with a Women of Vision Award. Upon departing the venue, they were immediately followed by photographers, Ashley Hansen, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's press secretary said. I have never experienced their vulnerability as much as I did last night. They were incredibly scared and shaken up. There were several times where the car stopped and security got out. There were instances where the police confronted the paparazzi and had asked them to stop or give them space to do this safely. Unfortunately that wish was not respected, she said. 10 Facts About King Charles III 1. King Charles III was born at 9.14pm on 14 November 1948. To parents Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, at Buckingham Palace, London. 2. He became king on 8 September 2022. After his mother the Queen sadly passed away in Balmoral, Scotland. Aged 73. King Charles III is the oldest monarch ever crowned in British history. Having been heir apparent, the next person to be crowned, since he was three years old. 3. From 1967 to 1970, he studied history at Cambridge University. Making him the first monarch in UK history, with a university degree. 4. King Charles III can speak Welsh. 
After spending two months learning the language, as he prepared to become the Prince of Wales in 1969. He still speaks it today, while visiting and addressing the country. 5. The King is a qualified pilot and diver. While serving in the military, King Charles III trained as a jet and helicopter pilot and became an accomplished diver. He's even explored shipwrecks like the Mary Rose King Henry VIII's flagship. 6. Plus, he's a keen watercolor painter. As well as a published author and music lover, playing the cello in his university orchestra. 7. As Prince of Wales, he founded nearly 20 charities, which together raise £140 million each year for good causes. He's also passionate about the environment as Prince. He spoke out about plastic pollution as early as 1970, drove an electric car, and planted many trees during royal engagements. 8. He's the reigning monarch in 14 other countries, as well as the UK. These include Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and Jamaica. As king, he's also the only person in the UK who can travel without a passport and drive without a license cool. 9. King Charles III is no stranger to an audience. Having featured in UK TV show Coronation Street, participated in stage magicians group The Magic Circle and presented the BBC weather forecast. 10. His son, Prince William, is next in line for the throne. The king has two children Princes William and Harry and five grandchildren. Prince William, below, right, is next in line to become king and was named the Prince of Wales in 2022. Princess Diana was a trailblazer, activist, style icon, and one of the most influential people of the 20th century. Although she lived much of her life in the spotlight, under oppressive scrutiny, there's much you probably don't know about the beloved late royal. From her favorite fashion designer and pre-royal working life to her taste in music and her parenting style, here are 40 things to remember about the people's princess. She was the fourth of five children. Princess Diana had two sisters. Sarah, now Lady Sarah McCacadal, and Jane, now Lady Jane Fellows, and a younger brother, Charles Spencer, now the Earl Spencer. Her other brother, John Spencer, died hours after his birth in January 1960, a year and a half before Diana was born. Her parents divorced when she was seven. Diana's parents, Francis Chand Kide and Edward John Spencer, 8th Earl Spencer, divorced when she was just seven years old. Diana's parents had a tumultuous relationship, and she cited cheating and physical abuse as some of the reasons for their separation. Her grandmother was a lady-in-waiting to the Queen Mother. Diana's maternal grandmother, Ruth Rorchi, Baroness Fermoy, was a lady-in-waiting to Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. This meant she acted as a personal assistant and a companion. She was a close friend to the Queen, and organized many of her parties. She grew up on the Sandringham estate leased from Queen Elizabeth. Sandringham House is located in Norfolk and is owned by the royal family. On the grounds is Park House, where Princess Diana's mother Frances was born in in 1936 and Diana was born in 1961. The estate is a royal family staple, and Sandringham House hosts many of the family holidays. She wanted to be a ballerina, but was too tall. Diana studied ballet and wanted to become a professional dancer, but grew too tall to continue. Diana's ballet teacher Anne Allen opened up about her time with the princess in 2017, saying, she had dance in her soul. I realized the pure enjoyment that it gave her. She loved the freeness of being able to move and dance. I could see it helped to alleviate her emotional life. She became Lady Diana after her father inherited a title. Diana became Lady Diana Spencer in 1975, after her father inherited the title of Earl Spencer. Lady D became her nickname, even after she got the title of Princess of Wales, when she married Prince Charles. 
School was not her strong suit. Up until she was nine years old, Diana was homeschooled before attending boarding school for the rest of her education. She failed her O-level exams twice and dropped out of school when she was 16. She attended school in Switzerland for one semester before she met Prince Charles. She worked as a nanny and a teacher. Before she met Prince Charles and became a princess, Diana worked many odd jobs, including as a nanny and a school teacher. She was paid only $5 an hour to play with children, do laundry, and clean. She also worked as a kindergarten teacher part-time in London's Pimlico area. She was the first royal bride to have a paying job. When she married Prince Charles in 1981, Diana became the first ever royal bride to have had a paying job ahead of her engagement to an heir. The Duchess of Cambridge was the first royal bride to have earned a university degree. All the men Princess Diana was ever romantically linked to. Number 1. Prince Charles. Engaged at just 19, Lady Diana Spencer married the heir to the throne in 1981, but their pressured marriage fell apart as both parties engaged in affairs. Number 2. Barry Manaki. According to biography, Diana's first fell for her married bodyguard in 1985. But palace rumors led to his dismissal a year later. Manaki tragically died in a 1987 motorcycle accident, and the princess suspected foul play. I was only happy when he was around, she said in a video obtained by NBC. I think he was bumped off. We'll never know. Number 3. James Hewitt. The rumor mill still wonders whether Prince Harry is secretly the son of this red-haired cavalry officer. Diana herself admitted to the five-year affair in her 1995 Panorama interview, but he still maintains it began in 1986, two years after her younger son's birth. Number 4. James Gilbay. As the other half of Squidgigit, the former car salesman is most remembered for his pet name, for the princess, which he used in a pre-1990 phone call over 10 times. After British tabloids got a hold of their intimate conversations in 1992, Diana purportedly ended the relationship. Number 5. Oliver Hoare. Diana became obsessed with the Islamic art dealer in 1992, according to People. Rumor goes she called him more than 300 times. A former bodyguard told the Daily Mail, he once spotted Hoare, semi-naked behind a potted bay tree in a Kensington Palace corridor, smoking a cigar. Number 6. Theodore Forstmann. The billionaire entrepreneur was 20 years, her senior, but became enamored with Diana after meeting her at a 1994 black tie dinner. According to the Daily Mail, he set her flowers every week for three years. Forstman told a New York reporter that he reluctantly ended the romance to reunite with his longtime girlfriend, Deborah Hargetty. Number 7. John Kennedy Jr. Diana experienced a moment of pure lust with the American in 1995, says her former energy healer, Simone Sins. Diana supposedly told her, we started talking, one thing led to another, and we ended up in bed together. However, the royal's former butler dismissed the one-night stand in the mirror, saying Sins, concocted a fantastical story of nonsense. Number 8. Will Carling. More of a flirtation than an indiscretion. Diana met the English rugby player the same year. The two hit it off, and she even took her sons to watch him play, people reports. Carling's wife Julia later lashed out, 
saying, I am sad that will put himself in that position, and that the princess did as well. This has happened to her before. And you hope she won't do these things again, but obviously she does. Number 9. Brian Adams. The musician wrote the single Diana in 1985, but didn't meet the woman that drove him wild until a decade later. In 2014, Adam's former girlfriend alleged the duo shared more than the song. I knew Diana had an affair with Brian, actress Cicely Thompson told the Daily Mail. She said the 1,996 meetup contributed to the end of her own relationship. Number 10. Hasnat Khan. Widely considered to be the love of her life, the Pakistani heart surgeon received the nickname Mr. Wonderful from the princess. Vanity Fair reports. The two-year relationship stayed relatively secret, but the doctor ended it in anticipation of the media attention. Number 11. Dodi Fade. A month after her breakup, Diana rebounded with the son of an Egyptian billionaire. After vacationing on his family's yacht in the French Riviera, the new couple were en route to London when they both lost their lives in that fatal Paris car crash. Prince Charles dated her older sister first. Diana met her future husband through her older sister, Sarah. Prince Charles and Sarah had a fling in in the late 70s, which is how Diana first met the prince. I introduced them. I'm Cupid, Sarah said. Prince Charles dated her older sister first. Sarah and Diana were very close and often traveled together until the end of Diana's life. Diana said that Sarah was the only person I know I can trust. She was a distant cousin of Prince Charles. Diana and Charles were actually distantly related. They were 16th cousins once removed, both descendants of Tudor King Henry VII. Prince William is also related to his wife Kate Middleton. They are 12th cousins once removed, related through Sir Thomas Leighton. Leighton is Prince William's 12th generation great-grandfather and Kate's 11th. She only met Prince Charles 13 times before they got married. Before they were engaged in 1981, Charles and Diana had only met about a dozen times. At the time, Diana was just 19, and Charles was 32. They had only been together 12 times and at one point Prince Philip pressured his son, and said, you have to do the right thing said Susan Zirinsky, senior executive producer of Princess Diana, her life, her death, the truth. Her wedding dress was record-breaking. Diana's ivory taffeta wedding dress was made by husband and wife design team David and Elizabeth Emmanuel. The gown boasted over 10,000 pearls and a 25-foot-long train, one of the longest royal trains the world had ever seen. She was the first to give birth in a hospital. It was royal tradition for heirs of the throne to be born at home. However, Prince William was the first future monarch born in a hospital, as Diana gave birth to both William and Harry at the Lido Wing at St. Mary's Hospital. Her parenting style was very unconventional for a royal. Diana was no ordinary royal mom. She was determined to raise Prince William and Prince Harry as normally as possible, including sending them to public school, taking them on public transportation, and bringing them fast food restaurants on public transportation. She made sure that they experienced things like going to the cinema, queuing up to buy a McDonald's, going to amusement parks. Those sorts of things that were experiences that they could share with their friends said Patrick Jefferson, Princess Diana's chief of staff for six years. Catherine Walker was her favorite designer. Diana's private couturier Catherine Walker had a quasi-sisterly bond 
with the princess. Walker designed many of Diana's most iconic looks and is given credit for her signature style. Seven celebrities who refused to perform at King Charles' third coronation. 1. Elton John Elton John was a close friend of Princess Diana. He performed at her funeral. John also performed at the luncheon after Harry and Meghan's wedding. He is friends with Charles and Camilla too. But he had to tell them no over scheduling conflicts. 2. Spice Girls The Spice Girls broke up a long time ago. They were expected to reunite for the occasion. In 1997, Ginger Spice famously kissed Prince Charles. Allegedly, the Spice Girls were asked to perform. The Victoria Beckham aka Posh Spice said she had no time. 3. Robbie Williams Williams is a friend of the royal family. After Queen Elizabeth's death, he wrote. She represented Britain around the world with poise and strength. Why Camilla was not allowed to marry Charles On May 6, 2023 Camilla will be crowned Queen Consort of the United Kingdom. But she always missed her chance twice. And it was not for lack of trying. In fact, Camilla and Charles dated even before he met Diana. The prince was just 21 when he met her in 1970. My great-grandmother was the mistress of your great-great-grandfather, she told him. I feel we have something in common, Camilla was dating Andrew Parker Bowles at the time. But it was on and off relationship. Andrew just happened to be on a six-month overseas deployment. It seemed Prince of Wales would get lucky. He did, but not everyone was happy about it. Charles was the heir to the throne. Buckingham Palace considered Camilla an inappropriate choice. The problem, she had a dating history. What if Camilla puts an end to a 300 years royal tradition? Camilla will soon be a crown consort. As a queen she will need a crown. The one she has chosen is controversial. It's worth a whopping $1 billion. It features a diamond known as a diplomatic grenade. And it has been recycled just for Camilla. The coronation is scheduled for May 6, 2023. It's earlier than many anticipated. Charles could have chosen June as a nod to Elizabeth's second coronation. His ceremony will take place at Westminster Abbey. The Archbishop of Canterbury will lead the service. This tradition goes back a thousand years. Charles will the 40th monarch to be crowned there. He will be wearing the St. Edward crown. The headpiece is usually kept at the Tower of London. It has been recently adjusted of Charles. Diana's favorite jewels now worn by Kate. On Coronation Day, all eyes were on Charles and Camilla. But Kate Middleton stole the show with her homage to Diana. Her late mother-in-law was found of pearl jewelry. One of Diana's favorite pieces? The diamond and South Sea pearl earrings. Diana worn them during a 1996 visit to Australia. Kate first donned them at the 2019 BAFTAs. She had a small pearls attached, however. In 2022 Kate sported the earrings on three occasions. She brought them back for Charles' coronation. Here are more Diana's jewels that now belong to Kate, the lover's not tiara. The tiara was commissioned by Queen Mary in 1917. Its diamond tied up in knots embody unbreakable love. What was the last year of Elizabeth II's reign like? Queen Elizabeth's reign spanned 70 years and 214 days. She was longest-serving British sovereign ever. In her final year, she took a step back from public life. Elizabeth wanted to bring Harry and Meghan back. She skipped an event she hadn't missed in 60 years. She also prepared her successors. This is how Queen Elizabeth spent her final year. 2022 was her first and last year without Prince Philip. In February Elizabeth appeared at the Sandringham estate. She honoured Accession Day and her father's death. The Queen arrived at the state by helicopter. She was carrying Prince Philip's old walking cane. The late royal had used the stick after the surgery in 2013. 
He passed away in April 2021. Philip stood by Elizabeth's side for 73 years. Her health began to deteriorate after his passing. The Queen suffered from mobility and back problems. Prince Harry talked to King Charles on night before coronation. Royal expert Nick Bullen claimed. Prince Harry talked to his father King Charles to discuss his plan for the afternoon of coronation. Prince Harry attended the ceremony. But jetted off back to his California home soon after the service. Royal expert Nick Bullen said that Prince Harry still managed to have a chat with King Charles. Nick Bullen said. My understanding is he didn't have any interactions with the Prince or Princess of Wales. But that he did have a conversation with his father the night before. Until the morning. Nobody really knew what Harry's plans were going to be for that afternoon. The royal expert claimed. I think everybody knew he had a plane to catch. Everybody knew he was intending to get home. But there was a hope. I think that he might be part of some of the family celebrations back at the palace. So, I think that there was a sadness that he wasn't part of the fuller day. Humiliation Prince Harry had to go through at the coronation. 1. He had to leave his wife home. Meghan stayed in America to celebrate Archie's birthday. That was the official reason given. Most people think it's because she had be uncomfortable. Meghan has accused the royal family of racism. Then she and Harry refused royal duties and left Britain. Harry was late responding to the coronation invitation. He still turned up, but without his wife. 2. Harry was seated in the third row. The row was clearly reserved to royal outcasts. Prince Andrew and his family were also seated there. Prince William Harry's brother sat two rows ahead of him. The seating arrangements were not based on the line of succession. Harry is fifth in line, whereas William is first. It's been over 20 years since her death. Yet many are still curious to know what Princess Diana's last words were. The Princess of Wales died on August 31, 1997 after sustaining fatal injuries in a car crash. According to reports at the time, Diana uttered her final words right after she was pulled from the wreckage of the crash, which occurred when Diana and her then-boyfriend, Dodi Fade, were being pursued by paparazzi in their vehicle in Paris, France. Diana's driver, Henry Paul, was reportedly speeding and lost control of the car, which caused the vehicle to collide with a column in the middle of the Pont de Lauma tunnel. Both Paul and Fade were killed instantly on impact. Diana, however, was still alive for a few hours following the accident. A firefighter who led the response team was reportedly the last person to speak to Diana before she was rushed to the Pitti Salpetria Air Hospital, where she tragically died from her injuries the following morning. She was only 36. What were Princess Diana's last words before her death? What were Princess Diana's last words? The firefighter on the scene of Princess Diana's accident revealed the last words she spoke before her death in an interview with The Independent. According to the firefighter, Xavier Gormelin, the Princess of Wales asked, My God! What has happened? Gormelin revealed that he was able to get Princess Diana to breathe again after delivering chest compressions. It was a relief, of course, because as a first responder you want to save lives, and that's what I thought I had done. However, when Gormelin learned she passed away from her injuries the next day, it was very upsetting. He said, I know now that there were serious internal injuries, but the whole episode is still very much in my mind. The memory of that night will stay with me forever. In Tina Brown's book, The Diana Chronicles, Dr. Frederick Marguerite, an EMT, who had been driving through the tunnel at the IME of the crash, told her that Diana woke up in pain from the crash. She kept saying, how much she hurt. Marguerite told Brown. Brown also reported on Diana's last moments awake after the crash. She turned her head, 
and saw the lifeless Dodi just in front of her, then turned her head again toward the front where the bodyguard was writhing, and where Henry Paul lay dead. She became agitated, then lowered her head and closed her eyes. Meghan Markle's horrible experience of losing her second child. In the summer of 2020, Meghan was pregnant. She and Prince Harry already had one-year-old Archie. It was while changing his diapers that Meghan felt a cramp. I dropped to the floor with him in my arms. Humming a lullaby to keep us both calm. Something was not right. I knew, as clutched my firstborn child. That I was losing my second. Harry immediately took her to a hospital. But it was too late. Losing a child means carrying an almost unbearable grief. Experienced by many but talked about by few. Meghan's pregnancy and miscarriage were not publicized. In November 2020, she revealed the story in an article for NYT. Luckily for Harry and Meghan, it wasn't the end for them. Their daughter Lilibet was born in June 2021. Is Kate Middleton done having kids? William and Kate have three adorable kids. They try to keep things as normal as possible. They use a chat sofa to discipline them. They live in a little cottage with no staff. Kate likes to stay up late baking birthday cakes. But some people still criticize their approach. In 2017, William and Kate toured Poland and Germany. Kate was given a baby toy in Warsaw. George and Charlotte were four and two years old respectively. Kate reportedly turned to William and said, We will just have to have more babies. Stop Having Kids soon issued an open letter. The movement urged the couple to reconsider growing their family. Large families are not sustainable, the letter read. Two months later William and Kate announced her third pregnancy. Prince Louis arrived in April 2018. Royal fans have been clamoring for baby no. 4. Nine countries not invited to King Charles III coronation. 1. Russia. Putin congratulated Charles III on his ascension to the throne. But Buckingham Palace did not respond. Putin was upset. Russia's foreign ministry called the snub profoundly immoral. Then the UK stepped up its support of Ukraine. King Charles personally visited the training center for Ukrainian troops. So it's no surprise Russia will not be represented at the festivities. 2. Belarus Belarus is basically Russia's proxy. Russian troops used Belarus to launch their invasion. Its leader Alexander Lukashenko has accused Britain of staging war crime in Ukraine. The United Kingdom does not recognize his legitimacy. So nobody from the Belarusian government can even visit Britain. The royal heir who waited for nine years to marry a commoner. Crown Prince Harold shocked his family. In 1959 the Norwegian prince fell in love. Sonia Harold's son was a commoner. Harold's father, King Olaf V, was not pleased. Harold's love put the entire monarchy in question. King Olaf V had three children. But both his daughters had already married. And they both chose common husbands. Now the fate of the royal bloodline depends on Harold. The king would not allow him to marry Sonia. Sonia came from a clothing merchant's family. But Harold was stubborn. He said he would marry Sonia or not marry at all. Many prominent Norwegians sided with the king. They felt Harold had to take a woman of royal birth as wife. Why princess and would be a better monarch than Charles? On May 6, King Charles III was crowned. The Brits were urged to pledge allegiance to him. 53% said they were not going to. But Charles has a sister, and she's far more popular. In fact, she is only second to her late mother. Elizabeth II holds an 80% approval rating. Anne, Princess Royal, is liked by 66% of the public. King Charles III is number 5 with 55% approval and has no chance of becoming a queen. At 73 she is 16th in the line of succession. But here is why she would have made a better monarch. 
she escaped a kidnap attempt. On March 21, 1974, and was returning from a charity event. Her chauffeur stopped the car. The another vehicle were blocking the road. Parenting Rules by William and Kate William and Kate are the raising three mini-royals. George, 9, Charlotte, 7, and Louis, 5. One would accept them to have an army of nannies. But they are hands of parents. They have just one full-time nanny. They use a method called chat sofa. They are also cool with screen time and messy fun. Here are more details on how they parent. William and Kate let their kids be kids. Their little ones are free to be themselves in public. That means being silly spontaneous, and so on. Charlotte is the boss of their household. Or so Kate jokingly admits. During one visit, she left her daughter at home. She joked that she would be running riot otherwise. And William once said. No broken bones yet, but they are trying. Running around pushing things, jumping. The Wales family keeps things low, key.